Hello and welcome to today's video on how I did my 100 portraits in 10 days. It's going to be a long one, so grab your snacks, your drinks and your pets and let's get started. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. So this challenge was first started by an artist and YouTuber who put up a Pinterest board of 100 references and the challenge is to draw 100 heads in 10 days. And let me tell you guys, these references are so versatile. He has all these different nationalities. He has sculptures. He has these goblin looking dudes. He has different head positions. So I definitely think that the references that he gathered are really, really fun and interesting challenge to tackle. And I love seeing artists put out these challenges because everybody has a different way of interpreting the references and it's really cool to see how everybody does it. Now going into any challenge, I feel like you should have some sort of purpose and uh, something that you want to focus on in the back of your head. So for me, my challenge to myself was to not only create 100 portraits in 10 days, but to also include versatility in my mediums and to create really nice compositions in my sketchbook, which got pretty crazy because I used pencils, I used markers, I used acrylic, I used watercolor, I used gouache, I used ink. I kind of went all in and I got really excited and I really enjoyed it and um, yeah. So if you guys stick around and watch the whole video, I want to know which one you guys like the most because they're all pretty different, but still cohesive at the same time. And I really enjoyed creating the fun compositions in the sketchbook as well. And speaking of sketchbooks, I used a eight and a half by 11 sketchbook by Jane Davenport. I hope I'm saying that right. And it has mixed media paper inside that are good for painting and pencils and basically anything. And some of the pages come smooth and some of the pages come rough. So that was also like a little challenge for me because I was adjusting to each paper every time I was flipping the page. And with each spread, I experimented with different mediums and I wanted to try different composition skills. So you guys will see me focusing on that as well. And on the first spread, I started off with pencil because I was like, you know what? I'm just dipping my toes in the water. This is going to be safe. Graphite is totally safe. <laughs> so I used a blending stump and just a regular pencil. And I also used an eraser to erase out the highlights of each portrait. And after doing about 10 portraits, I was like, all right, let's bring the watercolor in. We're going all in. We're getting the color pencils. And the girl that I drew on the left, I really didn't like how she looked. It was like staring at me. It was daunting me. So I took a black piece of paper and everything always works out for the best, even if you make a mistake. And I just drew over it and pasted it right on her, fa on her face. So it worked. And as I'm continuing to draw, I'm honestly just feeling out what I think is best for each head. And I combined colored pencil with a watercolor background or vice versa. And I thought it worked out pretty cool. Trying out different combinations with different mediums honestly made me realize how endless the possibilities are. There really are no limits in art. So I was trying to focus on that and see what else I could come up with with each head. Since I had a hundred of them, I figured why not try everything that I can this time. So I was glad that I love portraiture and I love drawing faces. So this was really not torturous for me at all. I loved it. All right. So as I'm finishing up the first spread, you guys can see that I was adding a border box around their head, which I think looks really, really nice. And when you're doing the portraits for this challenge, and I used watercolor for some of the backgrounds and I used uh, just the blending stump that just gives you the straight on the gray value for some of them as well. And in other portraits on the next pages, I didn't do borders for some of them, but uh, honestly, I liked doing both. So whichever one I felt it needed and it also depended on the colors of the backgrounds that the references had is when I decided to include it or not. And finishing the first spread felt so good but little did you know, you have like 18 pages more to go. So I decided to keep myself entertained and I got some red ink, which is just a ballpoint pen that I'm using here. And it was really fun to just cross hatch and cross hatch and cross hatch, which I love doing. And using red ink for portraits felt pretty daring after the black and white graphite that I had on the other page. So I made sure that I was changing it up 
with each and every one. And it's really important to make sure that once you're switching mediums, you're switching your headspace and your brain gears, basically because each medium reacts differently to the paper. And for the ballpoint pen, I saw myself cross hatching more and just doing like little hashes, hatches, however you call it. And for the pencil, I was able to take the blending stump and just blend out that value to give me the immediate result. And for ballpoint pen, you can't really do that. So I just focused on making straight lines or side lines based on each value that I see. And if I see something darker, I put the lines closer together. And if I see a lighter value, I start to also lighten the pressure of my pen. And I also started to take some watercolors or some markers and add that for the background for some more color because I was lacking more color here, clearly. And for this second spread, I want it to have a diagonal composition of the reds being on the left side and the blue ballpoint pen being on the right bottom side. So you'll see me using more reds on the top and more blues on the bottom. And I tried all different things. I did a red portrait with a blue background and a blue portrait with a red background. And then I was like, wait, I need some orange in there. So I added some orange and it basically came out to be like a primary color type of page, which I think looked visually very nice. So again, I just marked that up in my brain. I was like, okay, well, this is something I wanna try again in another portrait. So it was a constant back and forth of learning and seeing what I like, seeing what I didn't like, which since I had a hundred of them, I was able to try different things. I specifically really liked the blue ballpoint pen with an, a yellow background or an orange background. I think it made it pop really well. And you know why guys? Because they're complementary colors and if all else fails, use your compliments. There you go, that's some gold advice for you guys. <laughs> And if you don't know, complementary colors are any colors that are uh, across from each other on the color wheel. So blue and orange, red and green, and yellow and purple. Don't try to mix those together though, because you're just going to get brown. <laughs> and so when I finished the portrait on each spread, I took my sketchbook and looked at it from afar to see what elements I can add to the whole two pages as, as one. And I added them quickly before I put my tracing paper in between to protect the drawing. And I flipped my page and was on to the next. Okay, what is she gonna think of now is probably what you're thinking. Well, I have a whole spread of sculptures and goblin dudes that I decided to tackle with watercolor and gouache. And I loved, loved, loved the lighting in the references that he provided. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm craving to do watercolor right now. And I don't know if you guys know, but I love watercolor. And I really do love all mediums and I try to train my brain to know and be familiar with all of them which I think is really good and also really bad because half the time I'm trying to decide what I wanna use. But usually I just try to trust my instincts and it comes to me. Now for the spread, I had this idea of the composition based on one of the spreads I did in my travel sketchbook tour, which I went to Italy and painted there for a month, which you guys can check out that video, I'll link it below or somewhere up top in here on this video screen. You definitely should check it out if you haven't done so already. I do a nice flip through of my travel sketchbook and it was oh, the best times, the best times. Studying Florence and painting there was definitely a highlight of my summer and basically my life. <laughs> Anyways, so for the references that I was selectively picking for this spread in order to have a similar look, uh, they were all these clay sculptures or marble sculptures that were done by other artists, I believe, or famous artists. And I love the lighting of the tones that were actually included in the sculptures themselves. Some of them were green, some of them were brown or like sepia color, and some of them were like a cool blue color. So I tried to include that while I was painting. And just a general method that I used, I actually was taught by one of my favorite professors at college and I studied illustration where basically put down uh, one value over the whole drawing that you do in pencil. Then you start to 
pick out the shadows and you layer and layer and layer each value on top of one another as each layer dries. I want to have an updated video out for you guys on how I do my process for my watercolor and gouache paintings, so hopefully I'll have that out to you really soon. And yeah, so I'm just blocking in the background with the dark color and then I'm beginning to work on the portraits itself once that background is dry. I think adding any background to your portrait gives it an immediate sense of dimension and right away you can see how light or dark something is next to one another. I'm just putting some finishing touches on the spread and moving on to the next one, which I began to do ink and brush pen work, which I really, really had to switch gears here because it's a complete different method. And in my opinion, the first few were like complete fails, but I made them work and uh, I actually liked how they came out. I used a Kurataki brush pen and I used some microns, I used some Muji pens and also for some of them I blocked in uh, like a shadow value with my um, blending stump so I think that was kind of interesting. I don't know how I like it but uh, I was like okay let's experiment with that and I'm using the same kind of composition as the other one but I'm directing the portraits from the top left corner all the way down and then back up. And for my technique, I really just was using these little marks in the direction that the portrait is moving uh, to try to make some sort of interesting brush strokes with my pen. Oh, and this one, I'm also using a the pocket pen. I believe it's the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. It's what it's called. So I'll have all the materials linked down below for you guys if you want to check them out or possibly try them on your challenges. So I'll have that below. And so for the last few, since I was already doing the black ink, I took my Lamy pen, which I fill up with carbon black ink, uh, which again, I'll have everything linked below. I love using this because it doesn't reactivate with water. So whenever I do this brush, I mean this uh, fountain pen work, and I put a brush over it with watercolor or anything, it doesn't reactivate. Since it's not water-based, it's a very permanent ink, which I was like wow this is the greatest thing because every other ink I used to use would reactivate with water so I definitely felt like I had more control using this pen specifically as well and also guys you can choose to refill your pen with pretty much any color so if you haven't tried on these fountain pens I really recommend they sell refillable inks or you can get the cartridge itself to refill with your own ink as well Alright, so spread number four is complete and it's a very inky look, which I really enjoyed. And for the next one, I decided to combine a bunch of different mediums. And at this point, I felt like I had a really good practice with these portraits and I felt like I was on a good roll. So immediately after doing like 20 or 30, I was, I felt pretty good actually. So at this point, I was like, how can I advance this? How can I make this better? What else can I challenge myself with? And it was awesome to see the momentum that you gain when you begin to practice and practice, which is why I highly recommend this to anybody out there. And I had to bring my graphite back because for some weird reason, I began to miss it from the other spreads. And with this one specifically, I started to add watercolor and graphite and I mixed some of the watercolor and graphite to show how the graphite marks show under the watercolor so not always do you need to do such an opaque layer sometimes you can do a really nice drawing and then do a nice wash over it so you can see how nice your pencil marks work under your painting and I have been practicing heads and faces for quite a long time and I've done big portraits I've done oil portraits so this was definitely a nice exercise to get myself back going with my sketchbook and I don't know if you're an artist and you don't have all these sketchbook laying around that you need to fill up so I chose uh, this time to do that and I'm almost done I'm gonna try to give you guys a nice sketchbook tour video I'm still thinking about if I want to do them all together or separate so be on the lookout for that now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about pencils and graphite and uh, some of the things that I've learned within time. So I really like sketching out with a hard pencil because it doesn't allow me to get such dark marks initially when I'm drawing. And then once I have a laid out drawing 
uh, that's proportionally correct. I go in with a more softer pencil or a mechanical pencil that's either like a 0.7 or 0.5 that has more of a softer, darker graphite. And I think that it works out really well. And I also discovered a really good pencil that another professor has suggested to me. It's called a black wing. And again, I'll have everything linked down below. So the black wing pencils are like the mega monsters of pencils. And if you haven't tried them out, they're incredible. You get such a soft, dark mark if you really are doing big graphite projects or portraits or drawings or anything. They're really incredible. So I think that you should give them a go. And specifically with my drawing tools now, I'm using a holder for the graphite, which is like a 3H or a 4H. It's pretty hard and it really, I really enjoy using it because it's like a tiny little stem of graphite and you can always refill your holder and I really recommend that as well. Alrighty, and I think that was spread number five. So for the next one, I decided to use my Muji pens, which... I'll have a little story for you guys ready right now. Muji pens are amazing. If you have an access to a Muji store, I really recommend these pens for you guys. I don't know what it is for drawing as well. They're so good. And I went into the store to buy them and the owner tells me that they're going to be discontinued. I was like, what? No, I have to buy like 20 packs. So I bought like, okay, I didn't buy 20 packs, but I bought like five because they have a 0.38 like a really fine point and then they have a 0.5 pen as well oh i love them they're so good i alternated between my fountain pen and the muji pen to see the difference because i really enjoyed the black ink of the fountain pen and the muji pen has a, a even finer point which they also have like navy blue color and some orange and some brown they have all these different colored pens so you guys can definitely check it out it's like a stationary store they have stuff for your home they even have clothes uh, awesome love it but a little bit more about my technique uh, i really love uh, michelangelo and his ink drawings are phenomenal if you're not familiar with his work it's uh how should i say this uh grand i got to see some of his original drawings in person and i was just blown away completely so i always keep a book of his work next to me so i try to look at the way he uses his cross hatching marks and he uses his marks in the direction of the object and its volume and how it turns to make give that illusion of it turning and I always use his work as an inspiration for mine so I think if you have an artist that you feel has an interesting technique you can always look at how he or she uses those mark making or their color palette to try and influence your own work and see how you can take it to your own level. I decided to incorporate all of the goblins on this page as well and the sculptures uh, there's like a Frankenstein dude on the right and these devil looking dudes. I don't know. They're they're creepy, but they were fun. I, I, I would have never thought I would have so much fun drawing them and I couldn't stop. It was just addicting. So I did a row of black ones, a row of navy blue ones and a row of brown ones, which I thought the colors looked so good together. Like the limited color palette uh, was very appealing to the eye and just to me at this point. So I was really happy with these. I, I kind of see them as like stickers maybe. So I didn't include a background over their head, but I thought they worked really well as silhouettes. And spread number six is finished. So the next one, I took my colored pencils, a little bit different, which I still kept doing the cross hatches. And I was just doing it with a pencil this time to see what was gonna happen. You know, like we're experimenting here, so let's do it. And I took a, it's like a Tuscan red color, which makes everybody's art look good. <laughs> uh, and it's like a, it's called a Col Erase Prismacolor pencil, which it's a color pencil, but you can erase it, which is a uh, duh convenient, which other pencils I think also erase, but this one erases extra well. So here, that's what I'm doing. And I really have to say, I was so happy with the way these came out. I took another color race pencil which was a green color and I put it on the next page for a nice again aha 
complementary color <laughs> color scheme. So I really, really enjoyed these. Uh, I think they came out really, really cool. And do you guys see how fun these references are? Like there's like a cup dude with mustaches on it, which some artists actually sculpted these. So really shout out to you guys for these awesome sculptures that uh, I'm now practicing to draw. And on to the next spread. I did a bunch of paintings where I started off with graphite and I painted over with watercolor. And oh boy, oh boy, we're almost there, guys. I feel like I'm running a marathon, especially speaking so much. So this is also pretty new to me. So thank you for keeping to watch and you guys are the best. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. After drawing about 85 heads already, I was really familiar with the color palettes that I was choosing so I began to uh, pinpoint which ones I loved the most and I really enjoyed this red and purple color palette I don't know what was going on with me lately like I've been drawing to purple and I never really go for purple and reds uh, usually more cool colors but I was trying out everything here and I was wondering like how each day pass and how I was in a mood for a different color each day. So when you're doing this challenge, uh, pay attention to your mood because it's gonna influence your work. <laughs> I really enjoyed the dark navies and the dark burgundies and the dark greens, uh, like more earthy colors. I really was kind of streaming towards them and uh, like love this uh, mohawk dude. I put both of the heads next to each other so they're look like the same dude but they're actually interacting and I just did a really nice graphite drawing and then on top did the washes like I spoke about a little bit earlier and I just used that navy color. I also discovered another technique that I want to talk about when I was painting with my watercolors I use a palette that's already you know I have all my colors in the trays but I actually use the ceramic plate to mix my color inside the ceramic plate prior to laying it on my paper and I realized mixing a nice batch of that color and just laying washes on top of your drawing was a very nice way to organize your painting skills because I feel like when we're just using it from the palette itself you can't really mix that color immediately so mixing it on a ceramic specifically a ceramic one I don't know why it was so much better than like a plastic uh, really made me feel super organized with my painting and yeah all right so let's move on to the next one where I chose to do some limited colors with colored pencil and some acrylic surprises coming for you guys now <laughs> so I'm just doing a light blue color uh, colored pencil sketch here and I'm working on with some ink on top of it to make it more contrasty and I take an orange color for the next one so I was really focusing on how I can limit my colors and just constrain myself to one sort of uh, palette and for the third one I took a pink color palette with some browns which I also never ever do so I was like oh this is interesting why not uh, let's go even crazier and whip out the acrylic paint so this one came out in acrylic and for the next page, on the same spread, I decided to design these panels, kind of like comics of brush pen work and some Tombow markers. So I was kind of honestly rushing here. Uh, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> number 95, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. But then I decided to get my head back in. I was like, you know what, you got to concentrate, got to slow down, you got to finish strong. So this is what I was focusing on on this page. And... For the last portrait on the bottom of this page, I used a multicolored ballpoint pen and I combined all the neon colors of like orange, red, and pinks, which I normally don't do. So this was definitely a nice experiment for me as well. And I want to show you guys the last two portraits, which we made it to the last two. I was like, I have two pages left, so, um, and two portraits left. So why don't I just go all out and finish strong and do two large uh, acrylic portraits? So as I'm painting these, I actually use this, I was like, I'm not going to use my high grade paint, I'm going to use my paint that I got from like Walmart. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I ended up making it work and I swatched all the colors on the bottom to help myself limit my palette. I tend to overuse too many colors and the more constraint that you give an artist, the better their work comes out, I believe. So for these last two portraits, I really wanted to focus on a limited color palette and to create a successful acrylic painting on top. 
And guys, thank you so much for still being here. If you're still watching and listening, I was actually really nostalgic for this to be over. I think I have to do another one because I loved doing this so much. And I really hope it inspired you to make your own challenge and do this on your own. So the time has come for you guys to enjoy the final flip through. so thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video i tried so hard on editing it and putting it all together it almost took forever but it was all worth it and i enjoyed every every second of it so i hope you guys learned something or got inspired to do one of these yourself maybe you haven't opened your sketchbook in like months so uh, it's time to get back into it i hope it inspired you to create and even if you're not an artist uh, drawing or just doodling will I promise make you happy I'm sending much love and light your way guys I'll have everything below in the description don't forget to check it out I have my website and my Etsy on there so be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for more videos and I'll see you in the next one bye guys